Hi everyone, I'm Ian Harvey, massage therapist. This is Sam. Hi. And today we're going to talk about how to lift up the shoulder blade during a massage, how to mobilize it, and how to work under it. First, we'll start with four different ways of lifting it up. Then we'll talk about why you might want to lift it, mobilize it, and work under it. And finally, we'll talk about clients whose shoulder blades don't seem to want to move and what to do in those situations. If you'd like to skip ahead, click on the time codes down in the description. So the first way and my favorite way of introducing this scapular mobilization is in the course of the rest of my massage. I don't like to stop the massage, reposition the body, and then do a different technique. I, I want it to flow. And so to do this, while I'm up here working in the trapezius, I'm working with this shoulder blade, I can reach down, I'll go into a lunge here, connect to the side of the table, and slip my hand under this acromioclavicular joint. And just notice that having this little bit of upward pressure here lifts this scapula up. So this looks like this under her shoulder blade. I scoop my hand under and I press up using my fingertips but I'm not having to use my muscular effort because my knuckles are pressed against the table and they are like a crowbar angling upwards. So angle that upwards, allow your hand to rest. And now that you've got this scapula popped up just a bit, everything that you do medial to it is going to more easily interact with the medial border of this scapula. And if you press up even more, and you can also press medially with this hand, you should pretty easily be able to go under the scapula on some clients, on your more mobile clients. I'm keeping this inferior portion of the scapula sandwiched between my fingers and my thumb. And as I rock forward, it can come up superiorly, and you can make it circular. Just try not to drive this with these small joints of your arms and your shoulders. Instead, let this come from the rocking of your body. Now, if you're not able to easily leverage up that shoulder with this hand, if that's not comfortable for your unique body, or if you just like to bring the shoulder a little further up toward the ceiling, you can ask your client to raise this shoulder up toward the ceiling just an inch or two and slip a towel under there or any sort of slim bolster, uh, like a rolled up or folded up hand towel. And from here, you can use both hands. And this is a nice way of lifting that shoulder up and then slowly coaxing it away from the surrounding musculature. We want these rhomboids and the trapezius and the serratus anterior and all these muscles that are interconnected to form this web that keeps this scapula in place, we want them to slowly give up their tone. We don't want to try to pry this scapula away. And even if you're not able to get completely under the shoulder blade like this, you can still make progress toward that. And here you can do fun things like using your curled fingers to pull this shoulder blade outward. And you can still do that easy mobilization stuff, but now you don't have to be providing that upward lift. Instead, this hand can just be depressing that shoulder and then releasing to allow it to go back up toward the ear. The third way is probably what you learned in massage school, and that's to lift this arm up, place the wrist in the small of the back, and allow this elbow to drop. And you'll notice of the three ways that I've shown so far, this has produced the most dramatic lifting of this medial border of the scapula. And it can indeed make it easiest to work under it. What I don't like about this is that it tends to require the client to engage some of their shoulder muscles to keep this hand in place. And there are some ways around that. You can put a bolster right here. You can apply some pressure using your own body. But I find that this tends to 
break the flow, and sometimes it's a little extreme. For some clients, this will be a little too sharp, a little too intense, because these muscles medial to the scapula are getting a bit more of a stretch than they usually get, which isn't in itself bad, just that when you apply pressure as well, that can be a bit intense. Now, I do like this third technique in the sideline position. So Sam, go ahead and bring this left arm, take this wrist and put it behind your back, and let this shoulder be loosey-goosey. And so now she's not having to use her muscles to keep this arm in place. And the weight of her own shoulder is going to be helping me get under this shoulder blade. I'm not going to be able to get as much movement out of this scapula as in some other positions, but this is going to be a new sensation for this shoulder blade and for this shoulder because the arm is in this internally rotated position. And keep in mind that you can still use this hand cupped around the acromioclavicular joint in order to mobilize this entire shoulder girdle. And you can do some work from the other side of the table using curled fingers and do some more specific work with this medial border of the scapula. The fourth way is while the client is supine. So I'm going to walk my way under her shoulder. Uh, to do that, I'm going to alternate hands. One hand is going to allow some space for the other. It'll walk in, allowing space for the other. And again, I'm using my knuckles as a point of leverage. I'm not having to use my biceps or really any muscular effort in order to create the shape and then kind of crowbar that shoulder up. And walking under the shoulder like this is a good way of accessing that infraspinatus. I'm just kind of doing some gentle circles here with my fingertips. And you can walk even further until you are medial to that scapula. At this point, I am curling my fingers and I can pull toward myself. And that allows me to get quite a ways under that scapula. And I can do some gentle mobilizations here just by doing small circles. And I can slowly crawl my way out. And once again, my fingers looked like this. I was kind of hooking toward myself and pulling. It's good to have short fingernails for this. So let's talk about why we would want to work under the shoulder blades or to mobilize the shoulder blades. Uh, first, let's talk about why we wouldn't want to. I'm not doing this in order to stretch this tissue. A lot of times people encounter a lot of tension here, a lot of pain, and they think if I could just stretch this tissue out, it would feel better. But if the issue is here, I'm thinking locally and acting globally. So I'm thinking of their rotator cuff, I'm thinking of their pecs, and I'm thinking of these nearby muscles as well as the epicenter of the pain. So think of all these muscles that are pulling this scapula forward and rolling those shoulders forward and work with those as well as this painful area. So I'm not trying to stretch this out. Uh, in fact, I think that this area is often uh, chronically overstretched because people are working in front of themselves, they're curled inward. So just keep those things in mind. I'm also not trying to unstick this shoulder blade. I don't think that this shoulder blade is stuck in place in a structural way. This work may increase the blood supply to the tissues deep to the scapula. It may, you know, promote the bursi that live under this scapula to become more hydrated, but all of these effects are temporary and they will go away. And you could achieve the same things by doing jumping jacks. So I don't think that we are ungluing the scapula. So why do I want to mobilize the scapula? Why do I want to lift it? Because I think it provides some interesting novel stimulus that the client can't get anywhere else. So by lifting this and by applying this stretch outwards 
and by mobilizing it medially and superiorly and inferiorly, this is the only time some of these stretch receptors in this local connective tissue and the local fascia are going to be getting any of this interesting information. So that's us kind of talking to the spinal reflexes, but we're also talking to the brain. We're talking to the human. Where else can people learn so much about their own body than through contact? There are a lot of people who don't know what their shoulder blade is or what it does, and we can describe it to them non-verbally. We can let them know that it has this medial border, that it has this lateral border, and that it can float independently of the rib cage, and that everything that it does affects the rest of the shoulder and even down into the arm. So think of this as a mindfulness exercise for your client. You're, let, you're telling them the story of this part of their body, and that goes for everything else. We are making them mindful of how their neck connects to this upper back, how their neck connects to their pecs, how their pecs connect to their shoulders, how this low back connects to the hips. So by doing these interesting mobilizations, by interacting with these tissues in new ways, we're informing the client about their own body. Now, what about clients who aren't this mobile, who it's very difficult to lift their scapula up from their back? Uh, my advice is to think about 10 sessions rather than one session, to introduce them to this medial scapula slowly and gently, their first session, second session, third session. And as you're doing this, you can try these different techniques to try to get that shoulder blade to pop up just a little bit. But for many people, this scapula is enmeshed in a net of very tight muscle. And one session isn't going to be enough to get this to mobilize. So for clients like this, just think of introducing mobilization. And that might just mean getting this scapula to glide along the rib cage, rather than lifting it, rather than pulling it in this direction or pushing it in this direction, just introducing this circular movement, introducing moves that bring the scapula up toward the ear and that bring the shoulder down into depression, and communication. Some clients will have this scapula in a vice grip and not even know it, and it might be within their power to let go of some of that tension. So you can say that like, Sam, go ahead and let this shoulder be loose. Just let it flop around. And sometimes just a little bit of communication like that can be enough to get this scapula to move, as well as nonverbal communication, like introducing a little bit of jostling. And even if this doesn't allow you to scoop this scapula in the first session, Maybe after three sessions of that gentle mobilization, of that gentle communication, you'll eventually be able to slide right under that scapula. But if your client's shoulder blade won't come up at all, if you're just able to kind of introduce that movement and that's all you're still able to do in 10 sessions, I say don't count that as a failure. People are made differently. People carry their shoulders differently based on how they live their lives, and even how their body is built, how they're put together. So, you know, even if you're not able to do a lot of mobilization here, just that little bit that you are able to do is going to be significant. It's going to be more than they usually get out of that shoulder blade movement. All right, y'all, if you have any tips of your own, uh, if you have any ways of working with those stubborn scapulae to make them a little more mobile, please let me know about it in the comments. Consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.